Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I hope I may say comrades and friends, it's not just the right of the person who speaks to be heard. It is the right of everyone in the audience to listen and to hear. Don't take refuge in the false security of consensus and the feeling that whatever you think, you're bound to be okay because you're in the safely moral majority. My own opinion is enough for me, and I claim the right to have it defended against any consensus, any majority, anywhere, any place, any time. And anyone who disagrees with this can pick a number, get on line and kiss my hand. Now, I am uh, absolutely convinced that the main source of hatred in the world is religion and organized religion. The sort of people who ring me up and say they know where my children go to school, and they certainly know what my home number is and where I live, and what they're going to do to them and to my wife and to me, and who I have to take seriously because they have done it to people I know, uh, are just the people who are going to seek the protection of the hate speech law if I say what I think about their religion. It's quite common now for people to use the expression, for example, anti-Islamic racism, as if an attack on a religion was an attack on an ethnic group. The word Islamophobia, in fact, is beginning to acquire the opprobrium of the, oh, that was once reserved for racial prejudice. This is a subtle and very nasty insinuation that needs to be met head on. And we're afraid of the dark, and we're afraid to die, and we believe in the truths of holy books that are so stupid and so fabricated that a child can, and all children do, as you can tell by their questions, actually see through them. And I think it should be religion treated with ridicule and hatred and contempt. And I claim that right. Now, let's not dance around not all monotheisms are exactly the same at the moment. They're all based on the same illusion, they're all plagiarisms of each other. But there's one in particular that at the moment is proposing a serious menace not just to freedom of speech and freedom of expression, but to quite a lot of other freedoms. And this is the religion that exhibits the horrible trio of self-hatred, self-righteousness, and self-pity. I'm talking about militant Islam. Globally, it's a gigantic power. Globally, it's a gigantic power. It controls an enormous amount of oil wealth, several large countries and states uh, with, a, with an enormous fortune. It's pumping the ideology of Wahhabism and Salafism around the world, poisoning societies where it goes, ruining the minds of children, stultifying the young in its madrasas, training people in violence, uh, making a cult of death and suicide and murder. That's what it does globally. It's quite strong. In our societies, it poses as a cringing minority whose, whose faith you might offend, which deserves all the protection uh, that, that a small and vulnerable group might need. It says it's the final revelation. It says that God spoke to one illiterate businessman in the Arabian Peninsula three times through an arcade and that the resulting material, which as you can see when you read it, is largely plagiarized from the Old and the New Testament. Almost all of it actually plagiarized ineptly from the Old and New Testament. is to be accepted as a divine revelation and as the final and unalterable one and that those who do not accept this revelation are fit to be treated as cattle, infidels, potential chattel, slaves, and victims. Well, I tell you what, I don't think Muhammad ever heard those voices. I don't believe. And the likelihood that I'm right, as opposed to the likelihood that a shepherd who couldn't, a businessman couldn't, who couldn't read, had bits of the Old and New Testament re-dictated to him by an archangel, I think puts me much more near the position of being objectively correct. But who is the one under threat? The person who promulgates this and says, I'd better listen because if I don't, I'm in danger. Or me, says, no, I think this is so silly, you could even publish a cartoon about it. And up go the placards, and up go the yells, and the howls, and the screams. Behead those. This is in London. This is in Toronto. This is in New York. It's right in our midst now. Behead those who cartoon Islam. Do they get arrested for hate speech? No. Might I get in trouble for saying what I've just said about the Prophet Muhammad? Yes, I might. Look anywhere you like for the warrant for slavery, for the subjection of women as chattel, for the burning and, and, and uh, flogging of homosexuals, for ethnic cleansing, for anti-Semitism, for all of this, you look no further than a famous book that's on every pulpit in this city and in every synagogue and in every mosque. And then just see whether you can square the fact that the force that is the main source of hatred is also the main caller for censorship. Night-night. Stay cool.